Now, this is where you need a single page of reference for all your accounts in the social media. And today, just as it always be, websites still remain the primary way of information exchange. Number two, every other social media tries to restrict your creativity or it forces you to express yourself within a particular framework. My Facebook page might be different from Toastmaster Archana's Facebook page in terms of content, but in terms of visual appeal, it is just the same. I don't have a way to show my profile picture at the right bottom of the screen if they want to. But websites provides you an unlimited option to explore and experiment with different kinds of themes. We'll see what's meant by themes in a short while, but I just want to let you know that the possibilities that you have in websites to explore your creativity is just immense. Number three, you can, once you build a reputation with your websites, you can just change it or transform it or take it to the next level and start your own business with it. If you have a good reputation in your industry, you can start a website, start uploading contents and then start selling products from the particular website. Flipkart was just another website. Snappy was just another website when it started. But now, they're able to make billions and billions of profits because they've been able to provide the value and they've gained the confidence of the customers. All of that which happened by starting their own websites. This is the reason why websites are so important. You can create websites with WordPress.com in less than five minutes. I let you know how. All you have to do is first log in to wordpress.org, wordpress.com, and not wordpress.org. These are two slightly different things. Once you are, and all that you need for this is a computer and an internet connection. If you don't have an internet connection, just see if you can spot that 40 Airtel girls somewhere around, and I'm sure she'll be happy to help you. Once you log into wordpress.com, you are posed with a very simple question. Do you want to start a website or do you want to start a blog? I will choose with start starting a website because blog is kind of a subset for a website. So you just say create a, a website. And then it asks you what kind of website you want to create. Do you want to create a website for technology? If you want to create a website for literature, you go on these classifications. Once you select the classification, it will ask for a theme. Now, a theme is one of the most interesting things in WordPress that I've ever seen. A theme is sort of similar to a theme in the Toastmasters meeting, where you have a general thing, you know, which is running throughout the fabric for meetings. But just think about this. The exact same meeting that we have here, if we have it in a beach, what difference would it make? That is the same thing that you get from a website. Your data is going to be the same, but the way in which you present it, the characteristics of the colors, the font style which you're going to use in your website, they're all part of what's called your theme. You can select the theme which is free, or you can select the theme for which you'll have to shell out a few money. But believe me or not, it makes sense. It is worth shelling out that extra money for a theme if you find it. Once you create the theme, it will ask you for a domain address. Now, a domain is basically what we usually call as a website address. 
Now it might look as a very simple term, but many people find it very hard or they don't choose a right domain name. A few common mistakes that people do are people tend to choose a name which is very specific to a particular domain. For instance, if somebody works for software, if he or she is working for Java language, for instance, he would say javaprofessional.com. What happens is after some time he might learn a new language. And now they are under trouble because they can not modify. I mean, of course they can modify the URL, but they've already become familiar as the owner of javasoftware.com and therefore they're not able to change. Therefore, when you choose a domain name, try to make sure that it's as generic as possible. A very common technique that you use is what is called a two-word formula, which is sort of unrelated. First word is just an adjective, and the second word, word is a noun. How many of you know Sandy East? A lot of people know Sandy. So Sandy East is a thing where you say Sandy is a word, East is a word. Both of them does not make sense. But once you have both of them in place, you have the website. Now, it's also important that these two words are not related to each other. Because if they are related to each other, it's quite likely that that name is already being used by someone else. So once you've chosen your domain name, you create an account for yourself. And once you create an account, you just enter your email address, and then you've got three options. Is it for free, or is it paid? And you've also got a super duper option there, which is when you're someone like Flipkart or like a snappy. But the option that you get with a paid account is something like this. You can plug in an e-commerce website and e-commerce functionality into your website. Which means that anyone who logs into your website will be able to purchase some item or the other from you. And if your item is just a software item, then you don't require anything else. With just one website, you can start your business and get going. So these, I mean, this is a very high level overview of how you start creating your website. I, I'm not expected to answer any questions, but are there any quick questions here? So fee is, absolutely free if you don't want the benefits like e-commerce and all this stuff. But otherwise, uh, you have to pay it off. It's like $299 per year. Okay. I think my time is